Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Coronavirus is in the air. No, not literally, but you're rest assured it's on today's lineup of The Advocate. Welcome to The Advocate, where your usual suspects are primed and loaded with information and no holds barred discussions just for you. I'll be taking Corona and the aware Nigerian's failure to comply with travel ban conditions. Is this a case of separating issues, home and away? Wenga is back with a bang and is very much on home territory. He tackles matters at the foundation of our democracy. He's asking, did we ever get things right to begin with in the first place? With all the noise swelling around COVID-19 and with entire nations on lockdown, Libros manages to combine two topical issues on one plate. He serves up a two in one, leadership and coronavirus. You know Libros, some like it hot. Sandra is asking if now is the right time for a preoccupation with technicalities. Dare I say, there's something for everyone. So be prepared to be satiated after the break. Not all culture is homegrown. Some are actually imported. When in Rome, or rather, when in Nigeria, I'm going to be talking about behavior of returning Nigerians during coronavirus season. I've been ticked off, thoroughly unimpressed by the laissez-faire attitude and behavior of so-called Awayan Nigerians returning to the home country during this season of coronavirus, some of whom are personally known to me. The world is facing a pandemic, which we could safely say has reached crisis level. In Italy and America, we saw the consequence of not taking this challenge seriously. And now, it's on home soil, on our doorstep. We have the opportunity to learn from the mistake of our European and transatlantic counterparts. Yes, we were a little late off the block as regards putting border control measures in place. But as the saying goes, better late than never. So far, all our index cases in Nigeria are as a result of Nigerians or foreign returnees coming into the country. And yet, no sooner do we put a travel ban with accompanying recommendation that we self-quarantine in place than some blatantly presume to flout it. I heard about one group of a family of 10 who recently flew in for a wedding and openly proceeded with wedding plans without so much as a buy your leave. We're not even talking of those who outrightly refuse to submit themselves when they discover symptoms for whatever reason. How reckless and how unpatriotic. What pains me is that many of those people would instinctively comply with the regulations in their country of departure or deal with the consequences. Do they feel their fellow natives are less deserving of consideration? I appeal to all of us, natives, returnee nationals, and even foreign residents alike. Don't make Nigeria a dumping ground for lawless conduct. Now is not the time to think of me, myself, and I. Or with the transmission rate of this virus, sooner than we think, we may learn the hard lesson that what goes around comes around. Yeah, um, there are um, a lot of um, reasons for such behaviors. When you know fully well that um, in Nigeria, laws are largely, you know, um, obeyed in um, breach. disobedience, <laughs> in breach. And, and so the tendency not to want to obey, like I always say, in a state of lawlessness, it becomes illegal to be law abiding. You know, and then we have not reached that level of, um, you know, sensitization to actually sensitize the people that it's not a death sentence. So with the facilities on ground, a lot of people are, do not have that confidence that even our hospitals can take care of them. And, and so they want to self-medicate. 
And so these are some of the various reasons why you see you know, people running away. I ran, learned just recently also in Oshu State, some of the persons that were quarantined in the primary school, a lot of them ran away. And then you ask yourself, why would you want to quarantine somebody in a primary school environment where there are no beds, there are no mosquito nets? You, you know, the person will look at his life and like, you don't want to even die even before realizing that I don't even have the virus. Right, at home. At home that. So no, but, 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 but if you look, I, I mean, but, yeah. But mm. there's need for government. This reason for government is security and welfare of the people. There's need for, that's why they have so much money. Sensitize the people, ensure that the facilities are in place. And then also there should be consequences for our actions and inaction. But because there are no consequences, that is why they come here and then they flout this rule. Yeah, I mean, but in those places yeah. where they are coming from, like mm, you said, mm. there's consequence for every action and I beg Sano no day. Yeah. So that's basically No, but I mean, like, part of why I targeted the Awayan people is that they should know better. These are people who are, at least they can afford enough to fly out and fly in. Ah, so, so no, no they can't say that ignorance is their problem, at least I would think. And then, you know, on top it's of that, it, we're even just saying self-quarantine. We're not saying come and stay in a, in a school ground. But you see people roaming around, Did going for weddings. You can't stay in Nigeria, your house for 14 Bini, days. Bini lady in Italy that, you know, locked themselves in a church and we're trying to organize a wedding in, it, in Italy with the crisis. And so it's all about whether we are or Nigeria. We, for me, I think that just like what um, Libras has said, the issue is that we, we back a lot much more than we bite. Yeah. That is Nigerians' problem. You know, there are a lot of laws. And to even start with, your advocacy said that we were not prompt to, resp to respond to the Initially, issue situation. Yeah. How long did it take the president for him to address the nation? No, we virtually begged him. We begged him to come on, you know, to come out and openly address COVID, the nation. COVID so this so-called president <laughs> come into the country. Oh, the president or nobody, no leader is, is saying that the name anything. Of state? Yes, yes. No leader is saying anything concerning the virus. It's just all talks on social media. Social media was actually our awareness campaign. Nobody addressed it. So they felt like, okay, maybe. Yeah. There's no law There's operating no here. Law operating no, here. but you see, part so of why I wouldn't let them the off in spite of what you're saying is that these same people, and I, I, I know them personally, they're quick to lecture the average Nigerian. See, people, right, are, right, people right. are not doing the right thing. You don't but now right. you are here and you show yourself to be. For me, it's just selfishness. You're no, I agree with you. I agree yeah. with you. So to you won't be you better than us. No, but just I agree because, with you to a very large extent, mm. but I'm trying to also try to share the blame. Mm. You know, we also need to do more. Remember, now, the moment we discovered the first case, the index yes. case, I expected us to lock our borders. Okay. Because if we even, if, because they, like they say, if you tell gently, gently, or that shall one day have to tell, who will hear your voices without laughter. Now we are forced to lock those same borders that we were reluctant to, to do. Yeah. And so, and now it is spreading like wildfire every day, 20 new cases, 15 new cases there. And, and so, who still would have gotten to this stage? Why don't you, you know, take preemptive step immediately, knowing that you don't have, knowing that you don't have the facility, measure, yeah, yeah. and then after that, you know, we, we all would have been able to be going to work and come back. Yes. Look at what Chad did. A small country like Chad, they didn't even wait for index case for the laptop. Oh wow. Yeah, <laughs> yes. but here we waited, and so that is why these people, these returnees, are where people will look at us as, you know, less human. And then look, I have, even though they want to lecture us on how to behave, but they come back here, they, they are even worse than some of us. That's, that's the impression you know, they government, government, sorry quickly, government yeah. should ensure that irrespective of your status, you must comply with the rules. Mm -hmm. More so, you know, there was um, there was a lot of misinformation going on around that time when you know um, China was at the peak of their own case, saying that black people are immune, so yeah, much so because the first person to recover <laughs> from the virus there in China was was a black, and so the news was that oh, black people are immune. They they came up with some form of you know some theory. some theory, so to say that we do not we there's something in our you know. In our DNA. In our DNA. No, but why don't that Some people say alcohol, alcohol. It was going no, round. No, but that I won't excuse. It. If I you have it. a clear... No, this is what we're dealing with. You have a clear law that says when you come in, self-quarantine, they expect you was to be a, responsible. Was it, was it actually a clear <laughs> law? No, it was stated. It was stated. <laughs> and the people I, I know of who were flouting it knew of it. They just couldn't be bothered. I, 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 I'm, just, I'm dealing with an attitude. You, you, okay. you see, you okay. see um, okay. I believe very strongly that um, out of responsibility, we always escape us from trouble. It is irresponsibility that makes a man become reliability. The reason why we have liabilities now is because some people just decided to be responsible, either by greed or by religious stupidity. Okay. 
how can you tell me that uh, if I drink Ogogoro, if I drink uh, Shekwe, mm -hmm. the thing go, it go wash away. How can you tell me that? You know, we are, we, we are so stupid that people were making music, album, for Corona. Coronavirus. You know? mm. uh, I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I we have our own diseases. Uh, you understand? <laughs> and we like them. Yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, people forget that, A, when we say this thing is deadly, it is deadly. Do you understand? It's depressing. Somebody told me, somebody who, who managed a cancer patient told me that, if if you if you stay near someone who is actually trying to breathe from this corona uh, corona disease that you will you will pity uh the patient yeah. so for me i think we should just take responsibility mm. everybody whether you are in whether you are out like yeah, you said it's for everybody really. what you will not what you will not throw on ground at Heathrow airport just yeah. No more sachet, no more chungum um, wrap, mm -hmm. wrapper. You come here, you just drop it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah. Because it has been, it has been built in us. Yes. Okay, Nigeria Benga. is dumping, dumping ground. ground. Oh, a ground. personal you, experience. A that. personal experience in Heathrow, we're all on the queue. Mm. I don't want to mention the person's name. Everybody knows him. We're all on the queue. Be business class, first class. You know, we flew British Airways. We got into Nigeria. The moment we got to Nigeria, right at the door, so people were already waiting for him. They collected his uh, passport, and then he was just walking. At that point, he and believes then, he's, he's above yes. everybody. And then, above. and then I, everybody was just looking at him. I tapped him, and I said, look, you're an ambassador. Everybody here know you. And, and so, in another man's country just now, where you work and ply your trade, you, you be be stayed it. on the queue. But here, in your own country, you want to jump. You want to show, what is the guarantee that if you come out before me that your bags will come out before, because yeah. the bags won't respect you. Yeah. <laughs> so he thanked me and collected his passport back. That's our At least he listened to you. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> oh, wow. Anyway, huh? well, I think we, we, we started addressing the issues, an attitudinal thing. Mm -hmm. There's such a thing as shared responsibility, irrespective of where you live. You do your bit and I do mine. After the break, Wenga assesses whether the we factor of our nationhood got modelled up. Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. There is a carrot and there is a stick. The predominant reliance upon the latter signals a field of leadership. Is Nigeria governed by force and threat of violence? Not by intelligence, vision, or imagination. In recent weeks of this show, uh, Emeka talked about how quality design was important to improving not just the quality of lives, but also saving lives. Today, I continue his advocacy by discussing how the design of Nigeria is not geared for optimal performance in any designable way. Everyone knows that this Nigeria, my country, we love, <laughs> we hate sometimes, but it still has. We don't get anywhere where we don't run to. Was cobbled together by the British. It was essentially designed by the British colonial government for their own selfish gain and interest. At point of design, even up to now, it barely had anything to do with the, how the several nationalities within the geographic borders related, fought, traded, or socialized with one another prior to the advent of the colonial government. We are essentially a British creation, coupled together by force with the perpetual threat of military might, perhaps the closest. Nigeria ever got a real conversation about nationhood was the McPherson Constitution, 
which provided for semi-responsible government. The truth for me today is that despite the claims that we are a democracy, I think we pretty much still operate as we were under a colonial government. We are aware the people are given the illusory option to have their say every four years, <laughs> and the central government pretty much does as it, yeah, as it wishes and utilizes the very same tools the colonial governors employed then, the very visible hand of the security forces to corral dissent and to whip us into line. And now it appears that all arms of government are fused into one and the same powers. The certain is that under the current climate, it appears that there is no attempt at a grand vision of a new nation designed with the, uh, with the spirit of our collective intelligence and empathy to secure a better future for our children. Examples are banned from the Niger Delta to the attempts at appeasement of Boko Haram terrorists. That if you employ violence, the Nigeria state will sit up and dialogue. But if you carry placards to demonstrate about your right to freedom or self-determination, you will be met with the full force of the state. <laughs> no nation as diverse as Nigeria has ever made progress that way. We often talk of emul emulating the progress of Singapore, Malaysia, etc. Well, the leaders of those countries work hard. They listened. They welcomed diversity. They adopted creative thought leadership. We should do the same if we want to grow like them. I submit. Yeah, it's a, it's a good submission. Let me just quickly, because I made notes, so get yeah. them out. I mean, I, I, the last point you made was to do with violence versus dialogue. And yeah. for me, that's a measure of maturity, where you're still dealing with people who are using force, ban, I like ban, and ritual ban, this ban. And they're not open to hearing actually diverse views. Like you, like you rightly said, I mean, Nigeria is too diverse. There's no way we're going to force mold everybody to toe one line, you know. And even the other point I made was at least the colonial masters, because they say that, you know, you say they're using the same methods to, to govern us. The colonial masters seem to still have some respect for meritocracy. Some of the schools they set up were based on merit-based uh, systems that work, you know, but we have taken the merit-based system out of governance. So it completely, it doesn't make sense. I'm, we were hearing just the last advocacy we did, someone was saying that even in the distribution of, of relief materials at this time of COVID-19, it's still done on bipartisan basis. So people are still giving according to party membership and church allegiance. According to the levels which is so in the party. sad that we haven't risen ab above this sort of petty things. And, you know, and then finally, I, I, I wanted to submit that, look, what you're saying, what is the problem with, it's not so much a structure, because even if we didn't use the American system, if we use, is the heart. People are still, they're still desperate to oppress people. Rule. They're not, they're a rule with no end game, oppress. no vision. You know, so they're not really even thinking of the good. If you rule that you say, okay, let me deliver something on their behalf, we will say, let's tolerate your, your dictatorship. But you're not delivering anything on, your, on the people's behalf. So what are you really doing there? And then we keep reinforcing this kind of, with the reward system, like, oh, if you're a thug, here, have your governorship if you're this. So we're not really looking, there's no way out of the system, mm -hmm. as far as I know now, except we find a way to elect the right people into government. Sorry, go on. Okay, I'm just going to say that it is, it is pretty sad that the same government who tries to, you know, the claim to fight um, violence, but on the other hand, are encouraging violence, just like the reward system you talked about, you know, why why is there a why is there a conversation concerning you know rewarding them in the first place or concerning okay. a dialogue in Book the first around. place yeah we understand that there are peace and conflict resolution strategies and all of that but i think that there are better ways to do it but let's come back to what's happening currently i mean if you've been watching the news or watching your social media spaces you will see cases where the military men just as he said in his yes. advocacy have been given you know just a little power and see how much is being abused by that that's just such little power giving all you need to do is stop citizens of nigeria from parading you know the streets of um, lagos ogun states and it has turned to a battleground killing. when lives are being lost i watched no, the video no. and you're trying to those, save you know, lives by killing lives, yeah. lives by killing lives so yes. what really is the essence mm. trying to solve violence with violence yeah. is that the way forward yeah. that's where we are currently as a country wow. yeah, um the reasons for all of this 
is quite simple. I always say there are no consequences for any action hmm. or inaction. They say sit at home in Nigeria, Nigerians will come out to see if people came out. No, but she's saying that they're, they're, they're being <laughs> brutal. That's what Isn't I'm saying. Isn't that what she's saying? Yes. Yeah, that's what Someone I'm saying. And then, a soldier asked and then someone. for those persons that came out to see if people came out, there are no consequences. The man who they say, look, okay, just keep the guard here, ensure that nobody crosses here except those who are validly, you know, allowed to go. And then he takes the law into his hands and begin to flog people, okay. you know, ask some people <laughs> to jump inside the gutter. gutter. There are no consequences for his own abuse, abuse of powers. Mm. And so we've seen, you know, situations where even military men, you know, in senior societies are tried for war crimes. Mm. Where a general is put on trial and the, the policeman will cross-examine him even after his court martial. Mm. But here, once you wear that uniform, because there are you're no consequences for your action or inaction, you believe you're un untouchable. Because mm. we still carry over this military mentality. Mm. You enter a bus, you say, staff, you refuse to pay. pay. And so, it, it, that's, that embodies others to want to wear that same uniform. Mm. And so, it now brings this mentality of, do you know who I am? Mm -hmm. You know, so... We need to be responsible as a government mm. to ensure that everybody is brought under the rule of law. But, but irrespective when, when, when you talk of your about position. consequences, will, will someone be able to bring someone under the rule of law if they're doing the wrong? Yeah, you know, you if know, you yourself are that's what I'm pilfering, how that's will you now saying. make other people? That's, that's we thought I, Buhari yeah. would bring people yeah. because he was a, that, a guy that people assumed his hands were a clean. A policeman who is pilfering. driving one way. And then you drive behind him. How will he now enforce yes. the law against you? Yes. So because be our lawmakers, our law enforcers are the lawbreakers. Yes, most. that's the True. problem. You know, a man who is supposed to sit at home is not at home. And then you expect him to enforce people who will sit at home. Yeah. So these are we. Yeah. The moment you are in a place of authority, a man, I, I stop addressing somebody as honorable because I told him to his face that your behavior was dishonorable, oh. and he took offense because <laughs> yes. to me, when they say you are honorable, it means your ideas and behavior are up in the heavens. Mm -hmm. And so when you behave dishonorably, you're asking me, do you know who I am? Because you are driving a siren car, you want every other person to leave the road because you are rushing somewhere. Mm. These are what you know breeds this behavior. So, who is going to hold so this? we need to understand that leadership, leadership comes with a sense of greater responsibility, responsibility. and leadership actually makes you a servant. You, you know, there are some things I would love to do, but because people know me as somebody who's on TV, I need to show leadership. Mm. And with that, Room gradually, modeling. gradually you begin, it becomes part of you, yeah. default mode. You know, so in the last episode, we talked about treating people with respect. Mm. It's the same thing. Yeah. When there is no respect, there is break of leadership, and then you don't expect anybody mm. to be law abiding. No, but, but going back to your advocacy. Now, you know, impunity, yeah. impunity is the problem here now, beyond corruption. Mm. That is the consequences for your action. Yeah. yeah. You know, an average boy will say, you, um, let me give you this. Sometime ago in the secondary school, it was asked on a, a general paper a question. Who is the governor of on those states, in on those states? And the son of the governor then, I won't mention the, 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 the Navy man. And <laughs> the, the Navy man who is, still, who is still fighting for to become a president now in Nigeria. And the boy said, my father. That's what he wrote as answer. <laughs> I'm talking about as far back as, as 1990s. Mm. How can you say, my, who, can't you, don't, your father he has doesn't a have a he name. He doesn't have a name that you can write. So uh, the impunity uh, that people, every, and that's why you see people are now struggling, striving hard tomorrow, to get to that position because they know that once they get the there, you are above, above the everybody. Lower. So, so where do we go law. from here? Because your advocacy seems to be saying that, oh, the structure was wrong. Yeah, But solution. we're saying that structure or no structure, people will still Solu abuse it. Solution, simple. Mm. My professor, late professor Ibony once said, that some of you are in my class today because there is a leveler. You take the exam yeah. and you know you pass. But some just like that COVID one, like COVID one is a leveler. It is say that <laughs> some no people are here humans. who ordinarily ought not to be here if your father didn't beg his way through. Okay. Please be arise from me. What we should be doing, you talked about meritocracy. Um, merit. Yeah. yeah. There's need for us to begin to hold government accountable. Not because you are in government, you have a list for employment. Let it be merit-based. Yeah. Not because you are in government, you blow siren. 
and the rest of us should be in traffic. Mm. So once we learn to begin to hold government accountable and to call standards. leadership to order, yes. all these things will mm. get them right. But otherwise, okay. the fear of... mm. okay, since we are all in this together, my advocacy is about rubbing minds and seeking the way forward together. After the break, Liberals is all about tackling our challenges head on. No need ducking and diving. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. With an estimated population of over 200 million people, a lackadaisical leadership, coupled with a not-too-fantastic healthcare system and a virus that's moving with the speed of light. Self-isolation was definitely the best option for us in Nigeria. COVID-19 and our leadership. I watch with admiration how world leaders, starting from Trump in America, Boris Johnson in UK, Nicola Sturgeon of Scotland, Angela Merkel of Germany, to mention but a few, and then our own Babajide Songolu of Lagos. Yes, our own very own governor, and other numerous leaders consistently allaying the fears of their people and briefing them of their government efforts and curtailing the spread of the disease while at the same time taking questions on statistics and what to do in the event of contacting the virus. I beg no, put me for granted, I didn't say our president was missing in action, no. At least he addressed us. However, while the governor of Lagos State and his deputy were having sleepless nights, jumping between their offices, isolation centers, and media briefing, toilet to you, Baba, the governor of my adopted state, Abia, was relaxed and telling us that the virus would get to Abia because Abia was mentioned in the Bible. Maybe you know nowhere room day. <laughs> As people are dying by the minute in Italy, you know Italy is actually closer to Benin than Ore. I expect my governor, Godwin Obaseki, and his team to forget Adam Sushomole for now and put structures in place. But listening to the lamentation of the nurse from Ira Specialist Hospital, former Otiwoha, made me wonder how prepared my people actually were. No hand sanitizers, no face masks. Please don't tell me it's a federal hospital. I won't take that. I was amazed to hear some pastors requesting their members to pay their tithe and offering via online platform. Make them no make God verse for them all. The government is not only treating those affected with the virus free of charge, but giving palliative to people to sit back at home. Just last month, one would have been considered a lazy head for sleeping all day without a job, but today, people are being paid to sleep at home without a job. It is therefore callous, inhuman, and outrageous display of irresponsibility for any pastor to request tithe and offering from any member at this time. This is the time for the church to not only say thank you to all her members for the support for all these years, but also to thank look out for the poor and vulnerable in the society. The church and monks represent a smaller unit of government in the society should not just be praying to God. Of course, prayer is key, but you should know that a full stomach will pray better. I thank some monks and churches, too numerous to mention, that have donated cash and materials to their members, but I want to encourage them to extend it to non-members too, as the best time to show and practice Islam or Christianity is now. For Jesus Christ said, the only way to see the kingdom is to assist the least of his brethren. Even the holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa also admonished faithful to give without expecting anything in return. And since our leaders either practice Christianity or Islam and both religious preaches unconditional giving at this time, as a way of seeking forgiveness and saying thank you to Nigerians for keeping faith despite all odds, I would therefore advocate that our various state assemblies, national assembly members, state executive and federal executive council should join hands with the private businessmen and women who have donated by forfeiting their March, April, May allowances, not salaries as they need their salaries to feed mouth too, to the federal post to enable us to provide palliatives and incentive to the poor and vulnerable who became poor as a result of the misgovernance and bad government policies. 
For if such funds were used to subsidize basic amenities, we would have taken a, a great leap from our darkness of inflation and food scarcity to a new roadmap of giving governance and leadership a human face in Nigeria. I beg to move. And if you so second, please share. You've really thrown a sucker punch there. <laughs> oh. oh, wow. <laughs> you don't even know where to start with this thing. <laughs> you know, I, 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 gone. You know, um, on one end, I want to, you know, clap for you because mm. this is an amazing advocacy. And then on the other end, I want to really attack and fight you. Yes. Now, let me start from the negative. Or should I start from the positive? Start negative. Whichever Anyone. way. Start so, okay, negative. negative. Now, yes. I'm going to talk about the church, mm. which is what you attacked. Mm. Now, coming to the church um, perspective, I don't think there is any modern church this day that does not um, that doesn't encourage online platform of offerings and tithes. Let me speak. I'm not going to call the name. The church I attend, I cannot <laughs> actually remember the last time I paid physical offering, as in you know, in naira notes. Mm. When it's time for offering, this is a cashless economy, to be honest. <laughs> I don't remember going to church no, with my physical cash why and all that. But now, at this time. <laughs> Churches are still going on. Mm. <laughs> I don't know about your own place of worship, but churches are still going on. The only difference is that the physical place of worship does not now, you know, encapsulate everyone. Churches are now online. And that's so all, if, the, if, if the church flashes the, the, the you know, the, the name of the bank account and all that and say, please pay your offering and tithe to so 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 account. Mm. Nobody cajoled you mm. to pay the offering and tithe. Yeah. No, hold even on, hold when on. you're in I'll church, back. You even when you're in work. church, nobody cajoles you uh, to pay uh, offering and tithe. It's, it's a voluntary Thank God, Sandra, giving. you're a lawyer. You now, know what they call you know no, what wait, they call undue influence. No, wait, this is, no, wait, this wait, is, this is, this is not undue influence. Let me let me land. Now talking about whether churches are, you know, giving irresponsible or not. I know, thank God you mentioned it in your advocacy. I know too many churches who are at this point giving out to members and non members okay. at this point. I have a friend who is currently out of job, and you know, she was telling me of how. Um, a member of the church for no she didn't even she didn't have to say a word but reached out to her and sent money to her account okay. unexpectedly so these are members of the church i also know of a church who sent team members you know the leaders of the church to call members asking what do you need at this particular point mm -hmm. so please i beg to be differ that there are churches at this point that actually have their members and non-members at heart and are doing their possible best to reach out to people. It's good, it's I would, good you brought that balance. Yes. So, so what do you want to, what do you want to commend him on? Come, oh, oh, fantastic. Uh, asking when it comes to the, government, you blame them. When it comes to churches, you say, oh, they are doing so much. No, no, no. no, 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 no true, Sandra, true that there are so Sandra, many bad eggs. Sandra, I don't, I don't, yes. I don't, okay. That's why, that's why I also try to balance, to tell yeah. you, kudos to those ones that are, are doing, doing it. it. But majority, also, I listened to a pastor from one country saying, oh, all your tithe and offering was given to God, so don't expect anything from us at this time. They are the at ones the who crisis the we are in now, actually. people are complaining of money. This is not the time to begin to ask for tithe and offering, which is why also I'm saying, our elected representative, this is the time to say, okay, I forfeit your, uh, my Which salaries. Where I commend pastors, it allow us this. Pastors, yes. Salary, allow us it was this. Yes, allow us this. Yes. Pastors also, this is the time to say, you know what? Don't give anything. We want to say thank you to you for consistently giving. Now done. is the time for to us, let's, to give, for back us to give back to you. But there was a church you. that did that. And and some, some say, are, but he's yeah. saying that there's some... That some are churches are doing it. Not we shouldn't just be so. This church is a smaller unit of government, mm -hmm. and that is why you have most of them in every street. So this is the time for them. Since now, even some people, their faith is shaking as I speak now because mm -hmm. they also feel ah, these churches are always asking, "Come for miracle, come for miracle." How come this miracle is? So their faith is shaking. This is the time for you to build that Enforce faith by giving. That and Jesus Christ said, whatsoever you do to the least of my brethren, you do unto okay. me. Yeah. So let's not make excuse for somebody saying, bring tight and, 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 and okay. offer let, let online. Me, let me come in anyway, because I, okay. I think you, you challenged the church well enough. But I think, you know, obviously the right scripture for that would be, do unto whatever, you know, do unto your neighbor. You know, um, love your neighbor as yourself, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, but I want to commend the look at leadership. From what we did before, we're looking at leadership setting an example. And yeah. that's where we're at. This is the time when world leaders are pretty much on a beauty pageant 
you know, display. You're seeing, like he mentioned a few names, people like Angela Merkel, yeah. even Donald Trump. People know that they're on show now. This is the time to show what they really are made of. And thank God he was able to mention Sawolu. So we, we need to recognize that this is the time for true leadership. Leadership is not just a name. People are looking for direction because people are confused. This is something they never met before. Mm -hmm. They need you to stand out and stand for something. Stand for something and be consistent in what you stand for. This is not the time to be selfish, but to be selfless. So I think it's a good advocacy because all of us in different areas, unique. people are looking up to us, whether in our homes, whether as yeah. a, a father or a mother. And you need to now stop all those things you've been proclaiming before. This is the time to show, yeah. Yeah. show what you really believe by sticking your neck out and doing the right thing. And if you don't do it, then you'll be exposed that you were a sham all this time. So I commend the advocacy because uh, this is the time where, the world over, people are looking for clear direction. Okay. And, yeah. Um, um, Libro, we are going to start with you. Yes. Okay, now, do you, okay, do you agree that you are a church? Yes, I am. Okay, so yeah, we are going to start with you. Yes, start with um, there is a woman on my street. I'm not joking. This is not a joke. This is serious. Two days ago, some guys on my street called my attention to the fact that she's pregnant. They don't know where the husband is. And she's sleeping on the socket of the toilet of the house. So since two days ago, I took it upon myself to be feeding her and the two children. Kudos. Do you understand? Now we are looking for mattress for her. Because she's, they are sleeping on the beer socket way in Ogudu. I can take you there. Elijah, precisely. Now, let me quickly share this to you, with you. When I will government, give you 10,000 naira. I, I want to know where he's going. I'll give you 10,000 naira to, to buy, buy At least add to something to buy my trash. Thank you. And we are, going to put it, we are going to make it public. We are going to put it on social media for people to see. Okay. Now, let me say this to you. When government do their job, it is called responsibility. Mm -hmm. When NGOs, individuals like you, ministries do what is needful it is called kindness mm -hmm. showing part of the fruit of the spirit that is the difference i don't know if you get it mm -hmm. are you saying we don't have a responsibility to one another we do no 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 we, we have passed that stage no we have passed that stage mm. we, we, are, we are we are trying to merge the two mm. government and bodies now okay. ngo churches individuals or corporate organizations mm -hmm. and all that when you do that that's the art of kindness but it is the primary responsibility of the government to take... Lebrous, if there are social amenities and social security, eh, there will be less complaint. True. Hold on, hold on. I'm going somewhere. I'm going... No, listen. I I'm not defending somewhere. any church. I'm not defending mm -hmm. any church. Yeah. Uh, no, no, I'm not saying you're there. But I land your point because no, I'm still so, waiting for you to no, land there it. Is, there, is a, there is a place of responsibility by the government. Yeah. When we do this for ourselves, mm. it, is, it is the basic thing that God is expecting because living is giving, giving is living. Mm. You need to understand and we're that. one another skip. Yes. But you see, I don't want to join issues with the pastors that are preaching all those heresies. Mm -hmm. You know why? Ignorance and arrogance. Yeah. It's, you know that spiritual ignorance and arrogance. Call it out they don't so that they, all they, that they, no, I, I know. A lot of they people don't, don't know. People need to teach them. They are using on the influence of people. People need to teach them that, you know what? This is not the time. We have many pastors. We can't be mentioning names here. We have many pastors who are telling their members to go and use their offering to feed at this point. Yes, it's on social media. You understand? But my advocacy here in joining, I mean, supporting you is that citizens should ask their leaders and their, even the church leaders. There's nothing yes. wrong in asking them, how are we doing this? Yes. How is no, this being right. done? Yes, you're right. Well, now it's time for us to stop talking and listen to you. And here's what you had to say. On matters of Agbero at Uyo Airport, Mrs. Vera Odu says, no be lie, yo. I just paid 2 k now, in fact. It's been annoying. Once, while living with you, I didn't know this and didn't have that much cash on me. It was so embarrassing because they didn't accept my card payment. A passenger had to bail me out. Still on the same matter, Honorable Dr. Ibrahim Olaifa says, thank you, this was my experience a year ago while returning to Lagos from Arochuku through Uyo a year ago. Of course, I challenged them. But because of the need for diplomacy and the obvious disdain of the personnel for dignified reasoning, I reluctantly paid. Let us continue talking about it. Perhaps someone somewhere would need our call. After the live stream of the last edition, Rooks Omawumi dropped this comment. Just finished watching my favorite show, The Advocate. Now I can go and eat. Rooks, please don't let us come between you and your food next time. Ensure you prepare your food in advance. That way, you can enjoy a double dose. Food for the belly and food for the mind. After the break, Sandra takes things up a gear as if we're not moving at maximum speed already. Step it up, Sandra. Sure. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely. 
and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Well, Libras, some might say there's always room for acceleration. I'll be asking, when the going gets tough, do the tough really start digging into techni technicalities? COVID-19, is technicalities our major concern? Well, it all talks about the COVID-19 pandemic and since its outbreak across all continents of the world, the possible catastrophic effects it could have on Nigeria and indeed the rest of the world remains a major cause of great concern. Considering the sophistication of the health systems and governance in Europe and America, vis-a-vis -vis the, their current struggle to tackle the cases and death tolls which has remained overwhelmingly high, there is no gain stating the obvious that Nigeria isn't prepared for a pandemic of this great magnitude. I'm not here to condemn the government at this time. As the saying goes, whenever you wake up is your morning. President Buhari and his advisors seem to have woken up last Sunday when he ordered a total lockdown of movement in, federal, in the Federal Capital Territory, Lagos and Ogun states. I, however, do find intriguing the fact that a few legal minds have come up to challenge the constitutionality of the President's order. Not because they are wrong to challenge such, but because isn't the law or the executive order as the case may be all in the overriding interest of the citizens, which the same constitution seeks to protect? It was Walter Savage Landau, an English writer and poet, who philosophized many years back that when law become a science and system, it ceases to be justice. I like to think that those sets of Nigerians challenging the constitutionality have not fully come to terms with a sort of biological war we are up against. It is a war where weapons of the written law conceivably cannot save the victims, whether wealthy or poor. Take it or not, Africa was given a head start. Nigerians, we had ample warnings, yet failed to act when there was still time for considerations. Borders were still open to travelers from high-risk countries. Our slow response has led us to where we, are, where we currently are. Now we call it the fire brigade approach. The battle line has since been drawn. It's left for the authorities to fight in the best interest of us all. It's safe to say that the government alone can't do this. Stay home is a simple instruction. And while we battle to win against a deadly pandemic, our law enforcement agents, please do us the honor and do the nation some good by helping courts reduce the number of human rights actions it will need to hear when all this is over. Until then, I advocate on your behalf. Play your part. Please stay home, practice precautions, and stay safe. Uh, well said. Mm. <coughs> well said, Sandra. <laughs> I, no, no, no. <laughs> I agree with you. Mm. I like they say, um, whether you want to obey President Buhari's uh, uh, lockdown. lockdown order mm -hmm. or you want to obey the constitutional law uh, uh, challenge of not uh, staying at home because they say the order is not constitutional, it's left to you. If you catch the virus, make the lawyer to apply constitutional vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> it's that simple. Yeah, I agree with you also that this is not the time for legal technicalities. Mm -hmm. I have had cause to argue with some of these my colleagues who are my friends. Mm -hmm. Oh, the president doesn't have the power to do this. I also see where they are coming from against the backdrop of the precedent we have in government where you allow government to have a free ride. 
you know, before you know it, they, it becomes, they become, a they become well. abusive. Mm. And also a yes, so they want to, yeah, it becomes a precedent. But this is not the time for us to be discussing whether they were abused or not. Now it's, it says stay at home. Whether the president has the power or not, it will it solve the situation? If it will solve, stay at, stay at home. If you cannot stay at home, be careful. Just mind the distance and help government contribute to the fight. This is not the time to begin to argue, I want to go to court. Mm. And I also agree with you, the law enforcement agents should help reduce the human rights abuses. Some people do not understand. I've seen some people who say, look, even if they tell me this person has a virus, I want to hug him, he won't do me anything. <laughs> Illiteracy in Nigeria it's, is more than a disease. Yeah. <laughs> so the law enforcement agent too should help encourage and educate these people. Hmm. This is not the time to begin to use the boot and the gun, including killing persons. Because I, I was ashamed to listen to Governor Mahi of Ebony State saying if people refuse you, fire, uh, shoot aside. Hmm. Wow. This is not the time to begin wow. to issue such order. This is the time to win all over, to understand, especially since we don't even have the facilities. To tackle the pandemic. Well, again, just taking up from the last, uh, well said, Libros, well said, Sandra, I, I second and third it, you know, um, just taking up from Libros's advocacy as well. This is the time for responsible leadership. True. You know, whether these lawyers who are busy fighting their own corner, a lot of times you see people's hearts, they think that they're, they're fooling you, but you see their hearts by the things they prioritize. People are dying the world over, even if they're not going to die of uh, coronavirus. There's Lassa fever. There's enough going on in the world that tells you that this is time to pull together, not to be mischievous and try and show that you know book better than all of us. You know, we, we, we are, we're, not very, we're not the first to want to trust the government with any legal instrument, even whether it's hate speech or even the, elect uh, the generator. But we don't trust them. We agree. But at this point, even a blind man can see that. It has been proven that if you keep away from people with this virus, you slow down the pace of transmission right. and you give yourself a chance. Since we, uh, you know, Libros even said in the preceding uh, advocacy that we don't even have the facilities to deal with it were it to spread at the rate it's spreading in Italy or Spain or even the UK, you know, where you're seeing deaths in the thousands. I think 8,000 at the last count in, in Italy. You know, so do we really want that on our, our conscience? So what are you really fighting for? You know, it's like so you, you're fighting for a, 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 a pin and then you lose the whole world. So let's just deal with the matter at hand now. Let the president then try and abuse it. We'll be right behind you saying, no, you don't, you know. Even when, most especially when you have a president that hardly talks to you. Nah, he don't talk to you. You know, whether he's prepared speech or whether he's prepared No, liberals, speech when you have a president that if he wants to talk to you, he will first travel somewhere. Exactly. He first talk to you. But yeah. now, in day house, he talk, he talk to, you. to you. Some people Why say can't no, you recorded. Uh, whether whether recorded, recorded or telecasted or whatever. But Take this thing He has spoken in a way you will understand. Yes. Whether he took questions and refused to answer. Answer. After all, listen to someone so always take a question and answer. <laughs> if you, you, you know, so for me, it is not a question of trying uh, to prove points. They're trying to score, prove score points. No, 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 no. And mind you, these people that are telling you, oh, the president does not have the power, they are at home. Oh, uh, of course. True. No, you, yeah, they're they're children at home. Yeah, my, 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 immediately I read that thing, my contribution I just replied on so was on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I said, you know what? You can you can show us all the Lega intelligence you mm. have now. My brother, are they at the house? No, we, we, we are not arguing with you. I just advise them, you know what? This COVID-19, sorry, COVID-19, <laughs> we soon go. After, after it goes. After it has gone, you can see, court. court, eh? In fact, uh, you, you, in fact, carry me and they can no, follow nobody. No, we no. go follow you, go my court. My response was this. <laughs> we my friend, friend called me. My friend we will follow you to the court friend, and we will stand by you. That, yes, friend, president, you were wrong that no, time you made that said, uh, statement. One of, yes, so, <laughs> one of them called by me. Events. One of them called me and said, ah, look, Libros, did you see this? I said, um, uh, my guy, what is on my mind now is not whether it's legal or illegal. <laughs> He said, no, as a lawyer, you should be concerned. I said, yes, I'm concerned. That's why I'm at home. Exactly. <laughs> so, I am concerned. I'm at home. Are you at home? He said, he's at home. Are you, your family at home? He said, yes. I said, okay, that is all that matters that's to the end me of now. Story. I don't want the uh, constitutionality. Let's, yeah. I don't want to argue constitution now. Mm. You're at home, I'm at home. Leave it there. Yeah. COVID-19 uh, 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 is enough constitution <laughs> to debate on now. Yes, yeah. true. I'm telling you. So wisdom demands that everybody just, just do what they know to for be now, right. Yeah. For now. It will soon be over. Yes. Well, it will soon be over. It, it, it will, we hope it will soon be over. I hope also that we're able to tackle the issue of, um, you know, the ignorance. Yes. 
yes. that um, is be behoves around citizens. Mm. That is if national orientation yes, yeah, yeah, if we need to... this is where we need those national days, orientation. Those and days, those days they'll behave like yeah. Mamsa. Look, let me to tell say, you, it's not enough. It's not, it's not enough because there you is see, a larger percentage who are not. Sandra, online. there are people. Those days, it's growing good, up, not online. growing up, is environmental crazy. sanitation, you hear, Mamsa, Mamsa. National Orientation, don't let your Miami spoil your yeah. life. Mm -hmm. you know, but now, They've you hardly hear anything from National Orientation Agency. But I also must give kudos to my friend and brother, the DG uh, uh, Data State Orientation Agency. I, I like the way Barista you're calling out Eugene some positive Uzon. examples. That guy consistently, every day, he's everywhere around Delta giving information. This is it. And I told him, I said, look, if we have half of, of the, the, what do you call it, um, the National Orientation Agency just doing half of what, what you're, you're doing. doing. Yeah. Information will be everywhere. Not everybody telling right you, thing. drink this, do that, mm. don't do this, <laughs> don't mm. do that. You know, we have not, for me, I feel bad when I see uh, the uh, Federal Minister of uh, Health and uh, the Center for Disease Control counting deaths counting and numbers for us. Yes. It's sad, really. Well, you can't say we didn't, we didn't sound the alarm on this edition. Let's ensure we each do our bits so that collectively we give ourselves a chance at survival. We're all in this together. Mm -hmm. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plus TV Africa .com forward slash the Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, plus TV Africa. Together, let's keep advocating for a better society. Until next time, it's bye. Bye bye. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking, it's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, really it, 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 I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. Step it up, Sandra. Sure. Yes, my that's my baby. I've more <laughs> at that one. Or... <laughs> Then the governor of Lagos State and his deputy were having sleepless nights, jumping between their offices, isolation centers, and media briefing. Toilet to you, Baba. The governor of my adopted state, Abia, was relaxed and telling us that the virus would get to Abia because Abia was mentioned in the Bible. Maybe you know nowhere room day. <laughs> this guy don't laugh, he's my advocacy. Let me. <laughs>